you know, about another inch. Okay, and then we need to adjust this just so it yep. just drops the nose down. The question often comes up about the difference between certified and experimental and uncertified and what does that all mean? It's a question I don't really even know how to answer. The parts are all the same, pretty much. There are some experimental parts we will put on Thunderbolt engines that we can't put on the certified engines, but all the internal parts are the exact same. The only difference is the price. Okay, you ready for me to get on it? Yeah, I'm ready for you to be on it. On it. A whole bunch of stuff had to happen before we could hang the engine. I'm gonna save that for a future build vlog. It's an ongoing series following the process of building a Vans Aircraft RV-14. For now, let's get into the engine. We'll get back to hanging the engine in a minute, but first, failing being able to actually get to Lycoming, Jeff from the Thunderbolt team was cool enough to do a remote interview. To make this easier to look at, I flopped my shot. I got cameras rolling, and you guys can say the word when you're ready to go, because I got things rolling on my end. Okay, yep, we're ready to go. All right, well, thanks for doing the remote interview. It's frustrating to not be able to be there but you guys sent me some pretty awesome B-roll. So I would love it if you would talk me through what is the Thunderbolt story? Because I know a lot of people have asked me, what's the difference? Is it just custom paint? And I'm like, it's a heck of a lot more than that. A little bit of history about Thunderbolt is it started back in 2006. So it's been around for quite a while. But the difference between the Thunderbolt and the other engines, the ones that go down the production lines, is it has port and polished cylinders. So you get a little bit more horsepower out of those engines. Uh, but we didn't go to the extreme where your engine will not go to TBO time. When we do the polishing of the cylinders, we're also making sure that the airflow through them is a, a good flow, so you get a good swirl, so that your CHTs will be a lot closer as well. So you have a lot more even CHT readings when you're flying. And we also make sure you have balanced pistons, rods, and uh, the rings, so you have a lot smoother running engine as well. You won't be as tired when you fly with this engine. And it comes with the chrome rocker box covers, and like you said, you can do multiple different colors. I've done camouflage, and you can see behind me some of the different color schemes that we've done, but we can do pretty much anything with our guys downstairs. They're really good builders. Do you want to talk about the balancing, and, and like it's right down to a half a gram and that kind of thing? And yeah, you're right, Steve. Yeah, so it's a within half a gram. So we did some uh, benchmarking with other uh, race shops, like with the cars, and we found out that they like that half a gram tolerance. So we, I asked the guys here, our engineers here, if we could do it here, and we found out we could. Uh, so our builders get to pick and choose. They bring up a whole lot of pistons, like a whole box of them, and we can pick and choose which ones that we want to use on which engine. You can feel the difference. I've heard it many, many times from many customers that they can feel the Thunderbolt's a lot smoother than the other, run, r other running engines. What other reasons would someone, like I've had guys say to me, I wish I understood what the Thunderbolt was when I ordered my engine, because I would have I would have got that. Right, it's not just about the performance, it's about the uh, smoother running engine. I think one other thing that helps with Thunderbolt is you're getting uh, direct access to uh, myself. Uh, I'm an AMP, an IA, commercial pilot, and multi-engine rated pilot. So if I don't know the answer to your question, I can know, I know who to ask. So you're getting like a white glove treatment with the Thunderbolt engines. And I have many customers who call me up and I know them by name. So it's, it's more of a smaller, more intimate build. Because it is pretty cool that you guys got me footage of the actual engine that we have now installed. So that's pretty neat that I can see that engine coming together. It's, it's a unique situation. So I'd like to, if you could talk me through some of what I saw in that footage and some of the unique aspects of the engine, such as the configuration of the ignition that we've done. Sure, so with Thunderbolt, we have two-man teams that build your engine. So there's a customization that we can do with the Thunderbolt engines. So when the customer calls in, I'm translating some of that information to our builders so that they can build it to your exact specifications. So with that, we can do some different ignition systems. Some of those might be a PMAG install. 
uh, Lycoming also now has the Lycoming, our own Lycoming EIS system. We can also set up uh, for other ignition systems as well. We can't install them here, but we can prep the engine for the customer to do the final install on their engine. Uh, we can also remove certain items off the engine uh, if they want to do the EFII or the uh, SDS system and install themselves. Right, so talking about removing things, so we, we did not go with a vacuum pump because we don't need to. So instead we put a uh, backup alternator on that pad, I guess you call it, the, uh, where the vacuum pump would have gone. So uh, 18 December and uh, 7.30 in the morning and nobody's here, place is empty. So today, look what we got. So that's our backup alternator, which is gonna be mounted here. And uh, as soon as the crew gets here, we'll get started. Massive thanks to Hartzell Engine Technologies for overnighting us this unit in time for us to get it installed before hanging the engine. I really appreciated working with you guys on talking through those configuration options. So, I mean, I guess anybody that works with like homing is gonna get that kind of treatment regardless of Thunderbolt, right? Yes, they will, they, for sure. I've been doing this for quite a while. So I can uh, take your requests, your specifications, and, and know if we can do it here at, or not. Um, and keep you, and the biggest thing is we wanna keep you safe. Um, we want to keep your TBO times up as high as we can, depending on the compression ratio of your engine. Um, but we do want to keep you safe and keep you flying for a long, long time. Oh, look at this! Three months! <laughs> Yay! Oh, we got some swag. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They said they put a box of swag in for us. Thanks for that, Jeff. Hanging the engine was a little more tricky than I expected. You gotta learn how they, how they hang an engine in the bush, right, Al? We used to use trees. That is insane. Beach 18, we had to change one of the bush and we cut three trees down the tripod. Oh my God. <laughs> we were so excited to get into it, we missed the fact that the bottom mounts had an extra set of washers. So it took us a little longer than expected, but we got it. We got it. Okay, so we got our hands. Nice. Always read the instructions thoroughly. Another big item about Thunderbolt is being able to call me up and uh, have questions. Even as a, uh, a new pilot or a new uh, owner of an aircraft needing an engine, um, they can contact me and I'm not trying to sell a specific engine. I'm there to make that engine the way you want it and talk through ignition systems, talk through fuel uh, systems, talk through uh, colors even. I'm not an, an, an interior decorator, but I do know that certain colors go with each other. So it's it's uh, building the engine specifically just for you, customizing it, and just asking you specific questions. How do you want this? And how do you feel about this? And and guiding that conversation to how you want your engine to be built for you. The, que the question often comes up about the difference between certified and experimental and uncertified, and what does that all mean? It's a question I don't really even know how to answer. Sure. So there is a difference between certified and experimental. The parts are all the same, pretty much. There are some experimental parts we will put on Thunderbolt engines that we can't put on the certified engines, but all the internal parts are the exact same. The only difference is the price. The uh, Thunderbolt engines and the uh, uh, non-cert engines are less expensive than certified. Um, and the biggest thing is you don't need a core with the Thunderbolt or non-cert engines. They're all brand new. Uh, so you, if you have an old engine, we don't need that core. You can sell it yourself and, and use that, those funds to buy the engine. So, so yeah, I mean, a lot of people think, so what am I getting for the extra money or not getting? It's, is it less safe? And it's like, no, it's not less safe. It goes through all the same. It does. They go through the exact same safety margins here. So our company is an AS9100 uh, company. Uh, we get checked frequently by the FAA and other safety uh, and quality companies as well. It's an interesting conversation to have about the unique opportunities we've got for newer technology for the ignition, yep. right? Yep. We're dealing with the same thing with a panel, like experimental avionics are not less safe. It's just that we have access to newer tech because it moves faster than the paperwork of the certified world, basically, right? right? I mean, that's kind of what it yep. is. It's expensive paper that goes along with these certified. Correct, and Thunderbolt, uh, the Thunderbolt engines are used sometimes to push forward some of the experimental items like the uh, silicone gaskets. We were the uh, front edge for that, and then those went to the certified engines later on. Cool, yeah, I guess that's one of the misconceptions that I wanted to make sure we addressed. If you have questions that this episode did not address, please put them in the comments, but also the build vlog does get deeper into the weeds. More of the process details are shared there. I just decided to make this one about the engine. And I do intend to fly this airplane to visit Jeff in person and give him a high five.
And until next time, keep your flight chops sharp. I think I have more B-roll than I could possibly imagine. So it's so much, you guys sent me so much. So I don't think I have a problem there.